Okay. So yesterday we talked about um, uh, three body diagram for rigid body, and when we uh, we say uh, we have uh, uh, rigid body, then normally we need to have three equations: f x equals to zero, f y equals to zero, and the moment equals to zero. And when we say it's rigid body and it's not moving, it's not rotating, it also implies that um, the moment should be zero at any location within the component. We talked about this in chapter four. You can, you should be, uh, you should uh, have equation everywhere in the system that make this equation equals to zero. But you cannot say this equation equals to zero when the reference point is not within the component that that's not a valid statement and when we uh, after we done this we also talked about two other things two force member so we say that if it's a two force member you apply forces at both ends those two forces must follow a specific rule they're going to be in the, in the same direction but opposite the uh, they're going to be opposite direction, but the same orientation. Okay, so the, if you say this is theta, it must be theta plus 180 degree. So let's give it. It doesn't matter how many forces you apply to this one, the resultant at a specific point, if it, uh, those forces only apply to two uh, points on the body, then this must follow. If <coughs> it's not moving, it's not rotating. We're going to use this concept in chapter six as well. Other than that, we also talk about three force body. When we have four, uh, three force body, it follows specific physics rule. So let's say this is too small. I have a component like this, so I know. I'm going to have uh, forces applied to this position, this position, this position. Let's name this one A, B, and C. So if we have FA over here, we have FC over here. So can I determine the magnitude and direction of the force applied to point C, uh, B? If this object is not moving, it's not rotating. We can do that because if we draw a line, extending F A and F C then the force over here must be something like this. Well it can be opposite because we also we only define that they're going to be intersect at a specific point. So it obvious it should be something like this. Okay. So those three forces is going to form uh equivalent with each other, okay, among each other. So when we say this, we understand the, the direction of this uh, this force, this force, and this force. Then we, we're going to put something like this. So it will follow this specific geometry relationship. So if I'm giving you the force at A, the force at C, and by giving you a direction and a magnitude of the, those two forces, you should be able to identify what is the direction of this force. And by put three forces together, then you should be able to determine the direct uh, direction is given. You should be able to know what is the magnitude of FB over here. That's the idea. Okay. Yesterday we have worked on one of the example like this, but that's a simple, simpler one. Let's do a more complex one. So
is not in scale, but uh, that's how it, how it works. Okay, a main raises a 10 kilogram bar ghost, uh, of length 4 meter. By pulling on the rope over here, find the tension T in the rope and the reaction at A. So, how many forces we're talking about over here? Tension is certainly going to be one. <coughs> Wait, it's going to be another one. And the reaction at A is going to be the third force. But over here, you might notice that this is contact at both ends. So we treat that as a single force. Okay. So if we have three forces over here, certainly it's going to be three force body. So we should be able to, based on those two configurations, and finding out uh, the magnitude of T and the force at A. Because the direction of this force is given, the direction of the weight is also known. Okay. So with those information, we're going to define what are given and what we need to find. And start to solve the problem. Okay. So we, we are given the mass equals to what? 10 kilograms. That's the only information we get. Right. And another thing we know is it's a three force body. Anything else? Not really, right? So what we need to find? We need to find P and what? R A. Okay? We need to find tension and we need to find the reaction at A. Those are the two informations that we need to know. Okay, so with that information, the next thing I want to do is what? Free body diagram, because we have forces involved. <coughs> so we need a free body diagram. The free body diagram over here is going to be I have, we assume the bar is homogeneous, which means the weight of the bar can be assumed to be located at the middle. So over here, I have my weight equals to 98.1 newton, because it's 10 kilograms multiplied by 9.81. So this is the number that you're going to get, okay? What else? I don't really know the direction of this one, the reaction at A. But what can I do? I'm going to draw a line, extend it. This one, what's the next? Can I know the direction of A at this moment? I do, right? Because if I, those two forces inter intersect at a single point, which means My RA must be over here. However, though we know we can draw something like this, we have no idea what this angle is. Because what do we know? We know this is 25 degree, we know, but we don't know the magnitude of this one. We know this is uh, uh, 91, 98.1 Newton. Other than that, we don't have additional information. So when we try to figure out this thing, we need to draw another uh, geometry shape of the whole configuration over here that identify what is the angle over here. That is something we need to do. <coughs> so to do that, that's, uh, <laughs> D and 
secondary intersect and the E and F. Of course, this point is what? G, gravity center. Okay, so actually, they are identical. The reason I'm drawing that is because I don't want to mess up with my rebound diagram here. Okay, so with this information, I'll start to work on the uh, direction and the angle over here. So, what do we get? We get uh, AF equals to BF equals to 4 cosine 45 degree. Right? Because this is 4. So this must be uh, 4 for sine 45, and this is 4 sine 45 degrees, but they're identical. So with this information, we get this is 2.83. This is 2.83 meter over here. What else? Uh, this is one half of this line. Right? So this must be Make sense? Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, what do I need to do? EF is this length. It equals to C D over here. Do I know the angle over here? I do, right? Because what is the angle over here? This is B, B, C. This one must be 25 degree plus what? 45 degree, which is what? 70. So when this one is 70 degrees, this is right angle, what is the angle over here? Okay. 20. I know CD, right? So can you know the uh, length over here or the length over here? We do, right? Because this one is uh, 1.414 meter. If we use tangent, 20 degrees, equals to what? BD over CD. Does that make sense to everybody? We know this angle. Well, uh, we know this length. We know this angle. So can you figure out how much BD is going to be? Yes or no? Okay. So BD is going to be 1.414 tangent 20 degree, which is going to give me so what's so important? Then we know this is uh, then we know DF, right? We know DF over here, we know AE is going to be one half of the, the whole thing, then we sh should be able to figure out this angle. So by knowing the angle over here, we know the direction of RA, the reaction at point A. Does that make sense to everybody? So if we know the direction of RA, we know the direction of T, we know the direction of W, and we also know one of the magnitude, then we can just use law of size to get all the other informations. Does that make sense to everybody? So, we know BD equals to this one. Then DF is going to be BF minus BD or that is going to give me 2.3 
let's name this angle alpha. So, tangent alpha is going to be y over x. So if you take a tangent of this guy, you're going to get alpha equals to 58 or 56 degree. Then we know the direction of RA, T, and W, all of them. So based on the configuration over here, the next step we're going to do is to draw a geometry, uh, a triangle of the co combination of those three forces, then figure out what's going on for individual forces. Since we know all the directions, the only thing we need to solve over here is going to be the magnitude. Okay? With that said, that's my way. we know is the angle that's 20 degree because we figure it out somewhere here. Right? This is 70 so this this angle over here must be 20. And we take a long calculation from here to here and figure out alpha over here is 58.56 uh, degree. So that is something we have at this moment. So what can we obtain? And we know the angle over here, we do, because it's going to be 90 minus this angle, so we're going to get 31.43. Can we get the information over here? We do, right? Because if you take the another triangle over here, the angle here is going to be the same of this one. And we know there is another 20 over here. So this angle is going to be 90 minus 20 minus 31.43 degree. So we're going to get this one 38.57 degree over here. Then this angle is going to be straightforward because it's just 180 minus this minus this. So if you do the calculation, you're going to find this one is going to be. Or it's actually more straightforward because it's 20. This 20, 20 plus 90 becomes 110. So far, is there any question how I obtain the triangle over here? So Based on the configuration on the other side of the, uh, the blackboard, we know we, the first thing we need to do is draw a free bike diagram. Once we draw our free bike diagram, the other thing we need to do is uh, ensure all the three forces are going to be intersect at a single point, which in this case over here. When we have that, we're going to use geometry method to identify the directions of indi individual forces. Then, once individual for, uh, direction of individual forces are derived, the next thing we're going to do is to put three forces as a single triangle and identify the angles of those three things. But you must be careful because if you want to do that and finding out all the magnitude for the rest of the problem, you must have one force given in this configuration in this case, what is given? The weight, right? When you have the weight, you're going to use 98.1 
corresponding to what angle? This one. Sine 38.57 degrees. What is my T? My T is here. My RA is this direction. So R, the corresponding angle for RA is what? <coughs> Sine 10 degrees. Or 10 degrees. T is going to be 31.23 degrees. So with this equation, we should be able to get T and RA immediately. If you do that, it's going to be T equals to 81.9 Newton. RA equals to 147.8 Newton. And those two are my angles, um, are my answers. Does that make sense to everybody? The whole process over here is a little bit complex, yes. But that's the only way you can do, because um, if you try to figure out everything using uh, fx and f1, you can do it, but still, it's going to be a little bit tedious. In particular, when you are finding out the force over here, it needs to be fx and f1, so it's going to be two unknowns over here. So either way, you should be able to solve for the answer, but uh, uh, you're going to you're certainly going to have more unknowns in this problem because in this equation because you're going to have more unknowns here. Okay. However, one other thing I would like you guys to know, which is if you have three uh, two forces located on the same component, can you find now the force? You do, because the force must be what? Same magnitude, opposite direction. So you can do that. If you have three forces, can you find out that if I'm giving you all the direct uh, the directions of two forces and one magnitude, can you find out the third force and its direction? You can, because I just show show you how to do that. But if you have four forces, can you do that? Probably not, because there is no concluded way that they're going to be opposite direction or they're going to be uh, uh, forming a triangle. So in that case, the calculation procedure is going to be a, more, a little bit more tedious. But And I wouldn't suggest you use geometry method to solve for this thing. You should use uh, vector representation to solve for something which include more than three forces. If you try to use geometry method to solve that, you might be disappointed because it's going to be way tedious and difficult. And chances are that you're not going to get the correct answer. So if you see there are more than four forces, three forces uh, applied to a single component, never use geometry method. Just use, just decouple everything into x and y. And do that in the more, um, well, sometimes it's complex, but sometimes it's easier. But just do that in, in the representation of vector representation. Uh, using vector methods. Okay? Okay, any question? Have any question? Yes. If you, if you were to split that up, like split those forces up into the x and y, could you not take a moment at a and then go with that way? I wouldn't do that because the first thing I would do is to solve the force as a t. So I would like to use this one as my reference point. Because how many elements I'm, I need to apply over here? So if I don't apply that, it's actually going to be a little bit easy. That's a good question. So if I do M and A, what am I going to do? I'm going to have negative 98.1 multiplied by 1.414. This is a force created by the 
wait, and this is what? The moment on. And what I'm going to have is going to be T over here, but be careful. T over here is going to be T uh, sine 25 degree multiplied by 4 okay. equals to what? Right? So you can find T directly. I believe the answer should be the same. So once you get T equals to that value, the next thing you need to do, because it's going to be here. The reason I'm saying it's going to be this direction is because I know the moment I'm over here is going to be 4 meters. You don't want to decouple that into x direction, y direction. Because if you decouple that into x direction, y direction, you also need to decouple the moment off into x direction, y direction. Which means you need to have, you need to calculate the, the number for twice. As an undergraduate student, I believe the more calculation you do, the more mistake you possibly going to make. So just use one, which is perpendicular to the moment off. That's what I'm doing over here. And once that's done, you start to use those two equations. Because even though you don't know what's going on over here, but you know, you do know there are two reactions. One is going to be from the ground, the other one is going to be from the wall. So you should assume it's going to be a y and a x. How many forces we're talking about for the x direction? This one, uh, the force of this one, cosine 20 degree minus plus AX equals to zero. How many are we talking about in Y direction? It's going to be Actually, this is easy. It's yours. Uh, but I still need to let you guys know why we want to use geometry method. But most of the time, most of the time, seriously, if you use this method, it's going to be way easier. Over here, how many calculations do you actually need to do? One over here. Once you get this done, this is, I don't think you're going to make a whole lot of mistake over here. Over here, it's the same. Compared to this method, this is way easy. But, well, when you are solving this kind of problem uh, in the exam, it doesn't matter what you want to do. Normally, I'm not going to force you to use geometry method, but you can do that. I Personally, I would suggest you guys all do in x direction, y direction, because it will be easier and this kind of method applies to most of engineering courses. Okay, yes. When you're calculating the moment of A, do you not include the R sub A force because it's No, because I'm using this one as my moment center. And because that, that force is touching the moment center. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. We can assume this is too close, they can be ignored. No. Because I don't really know the radius over here. You can argue that I use this one, those two is going to give me a uh, moment, or you can say I'm all, I, I'm actually doing here, and, but this one can be ignored. So normally we just ignore that. Okay. Yes, there are, if you are doing precise control of those kind of things, this is concern, but this is 241, we don't care. Okay. Okay, so that's everything we need to talk, we, we need to do for a two dimensional problem. Next, we're going to do three dimensional problem. Three dimensional problem is similar to uh, two dimensional configuration. Uh, the only difference is uh, because we have three dimensional uh, connections, the direct the normal force is certainly going to be a little bit different. Um, again, uh, you can you can uh, take a look what you 
have in your textbook, depending on what kind of uh, configuration you have in your notes, and determine um, whether you should provide moment and how many forces we're talking about here. But the reality is this kind of problem is not going, going to be included in your test because it's going to be forever and you'll try to kill yourself while you're solving this problem in the same. Try not to, we're trying, I, I'll try to prevent you guys doing that, so. Several things still apply. When this is a table, what do we have over here? If this table is not stable, it's always a pulling force, which means it's over here. So if you know the orientation of this one, this is always perpendicular to the direction of this surface. If this is a round thing, and what do I have over here? What kind of a force am I talking over here? Perpendicular to this force, to the surface. If this is a roller, <laughs> Still perpendicular to the to the wheel, so that's basically the thing that we're going to do over here. Uh, the dip, if it's going to be a pin connection, something like this, then the force provided over here is going to be. Fx, Fy, and Fz. Okay. How about if I have something like this? What kind of force? What kind of forces and moment? I'm uh, providing at this specific location. This one is this one is not about sliding back and forth, but this one can actually rotate freely. So, what kind of forces are, am I talking about? Let's say. Do I have a force in x direction so that this is not going to sliding in this direction? I do, right? So over here, you need to draw your free by diagram, which has the fx over here. So I said this one is not going to sliding back and forth, which means do I have uh, supported force at this joint? <coughs> yes, right? Because this one you cannot push this in or pull it out. So we have something like this. So this is something like this. Can this bar over here move up, down, really? No. If we cannot move that really, certainly we're going to have a force over here. That's a free body diagram of force at this point for this joint. The next thing we need to do is to providing a uh, moment or torque. So around x axis. So when we say we have moment around x axis, what action are we actually talking about? Something like this, right? So if you have a joint like this, can this one be rotated in this direction? No. So when we cannot rotate it, it means that this joint is going to provide a, a moment. So this is positive, so normally I would like to say this is positive. 
And let's say this one can rotate 3D over here. <coughs> so does that mean I'm going to provide any moment around Y axis? Yeah. Because it can be rotated 3D. Now, around the axis, can I rotate this bar in this direction? No. If it's not, then we're not going to have any more. We, we, we should have a moment provided over here. So if you see a configuration like this, that is going to be your pre-by diagram for this thing. So you might, have, you might find sometimes it can be very difficult to figure out what you really want to draw over here. So that's the reason I'm not going to ask you guys to do this in the exam, but uh, in the homework you might need you might need to figure out what's going on. Because uh, I don't think everybody can memorize all the different types of joints, the pre diagram of the joints when you are doing the exam. So that part is not going to be in the exam. It might be in your homework, but not in the exam. Okay. I want to draw the free diagonal for this thing. 
I have force applied at A, B, and C. And this is plate, so which means I have uh, gravity located over here. And I do X, Y, and Z, which means I'm going to have a weight downward located at the gravity center over here. Now, let's figure out what's going on for the other three uh, connections. So, point C, what is it? Is it uh, a, a pin joint, or is a cable, or it's uh, a ball, or whatever it is? What is this? Cable. Cable, so when it's a cable, what kind of configuration we're talking about here? So we have T over here. Let's name this one the T. Okay. So how about point B? It's a roller. So when it's a roller, what do we have? One force. One force perpendicular to the surface. Let's name this thing over here. What is this? This is a pin joint. So when this is a pin in three dimensional. Can I rotate it freely along three indep independent axes? I do. But can I move this freely in at this point? No. So which means what kind of configuration I have at A? Do I have forces? I do. I do have any moment? Yes or no? No, we don't have any moment because I can rotate this freely, which means this one doesn't provide any moment to prevent me from rotating this uh, point to any direction I want to. So this is going to be the uh, free by diagram for my configuration. <coughs> okay, does that make sense to everybody? If you guys have a uh, free by diagram like this, you know how to draw it. Okay, so I would like to draw the free bike diagram for this specific uh I would like to use Okay. So obviously I have a, a force over here applied along x axis, which is 200 meters. So I would like to draw that uh, in the beginning. And over here. Well, though it doesn't specify, but uh, this thing over here has you can you can pull this one easily and move this one back and forth on the uh, on the berry. So, which means we only have two forces along uh, this direction and this direction. Okay, so. When we have that at joint B, uh, joint C, all I have, I cannot move this thing along x axis, which means I'm going to have Zx over here. I wouldn't be able to move this thing up and down, which means I have a force CD over here. But I just say that I can move it back and forth. So along the uh, y axis. I don't have any force provided. Make sense? Now, how about the rotation? Can I rotate this thing like this? Rotate the whole wall over here? I can't, right? So which means I should have some moment provided over there.
I can rotate this freely along this axis. So C1, uh, C, uh, MCY is not provided. And see, can I rotate this thing over here like this? I can't. So I'll have MCX over here. Okay. And all those three uh, bearings is the same configuration, so we just do that one by one. And that is going to be our rewrite diagram. So over here, this bar can move back and forth easily, so we don't have any force along, uh, in this case, the axis. But we do have force along uh, x axis and the x. For A over here, it can move freely along X axis, but not the other two directions. So I have A, C, A1, and the moment is going to be applied to those axes as well, so it's going to be M, A, C. My free bike diagram, as you can see, this is pretty easy. And if I don't, if I give you something, of, if this is the only configuration you This is a configuration of three-dimensional block. And this is a uniform I-beam fixed to the wall at, at all. And three mutually perpendicular forces are applied over here. And I have another force applied over here. So I would like to find the loads acting on the beam at the wall. So at this moment, I'm not trying to figure out what's going on at the point O. I just want to know the loads provided by those forces at this point. So itself is a little bit tedious already. So when we say it's going to be um, something like this, 
we are. This, by the way, this is three by diagonal already, so I'm not going to draw another one. It will take me forever to solve this problem. So I'm giving, given four forces and one moment. I need to find the loads and all, which means I need to find the moment and the force. For the force is somewhat straightforward because I just just add all the forces together in x direction, y direction, in the z direction, then I get it. So in this case, this is x, this is y, this is z. So be careful about which direction you are actually writing it down. So over here, I have three i plus 1.5 j minus K and one other force over here is going to be positive for I so if you solve this a little bit you're going to get 7 I plus 1.5 J minus 2K not so uh, difficult to get the answer because you just add the forces together. However, when we talk about <coughs> the moment and all, we have three forces apply at this point, we have one force apply at this position, and we have a moment applied over here. So we would need to do the cross product of the location from here to here, from here to here. That is how we can get our answer. So over here, uh, we're going to have three kilo newton, yeah, three, and this is negative three k, which is this one. Plus R A plus product N A oh no F A which is I think is this point and R B plus product F B. So the next thing you need to figure out is uh, uh, moment R the the vector of the moment of and the vector of the force. The vector of forces are so difficult to get because they are given already. <coughs> but the location is something you would need to uh, take care of. And it might be a little bit tedious to get that. So in this case, it's going to be 1.2 meter over here. And that is my I or J is going to be upward and we know that the, the thickness from the center to this one is 0.2 meter so it's going to be a positive 0.2 J and from here to here is another 0.2 uh, meter but in this case it's going to be negative direction which I have negative 0.2 Okay, close product. The first part, 3i plus 1.5j minus 2k. That's complete. The first part of the equation over here, uh, no, the second part of the equation over here. Then I would need to do for the RB and FB. So for RB over here, uh, still, the x is going to be um, 1.2i. For y, since this is uh, connected to origin, so the y over here is going to be negative uh, 0.2j. 
for the z direction is towards to this direction, which means it's going to be a positive number. Now, what is the force? It's going to be four single force in i direction. So this is this expands the uh, calculation we learned in chapter two, but this time you need to combine two of them together. So essentially, it's going to be a little bit. Well, I, I wouldn't say it's, it's difficult, but you, you, you just need to be careful about the calculation. So I'm not going to go through the whole metric system. I'm going to give you the answer directly. So if you do that, you're going to get 0.1 i minus 2.6 j plus 1 k kilonewton meter. This is the answer. Does it make sense to everybody? So I'm not saying this is uh, uh, equivalent for this kind of problem. This is just telling you the loads uh, point out. So essentially, the, the calculation over here is just an extension we learned in uh, chapter 2, not even chapter 3. Uh, for chapter 3 and chapter 4, there's something we're going to talk about. Now, this is chapter 4, the beginning part of chapter 4. Uh, the next problem that we're going to talk about is uh, the equilibrium problem. So it means that when we draw the free body diagram, we would need to be Careful. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So, by the way, you see, um, I'm drawing over C X C D, uh, the close, uh, the 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 moment over here, right? In your textbook, those terms are not existing. They, they assume they're not applying any moment to this point. So when you are doing the calculation, I'm not pretty sure whether they're going to be identical, but uh, if you, uh, again, if you are solving the problem in your textbook, sure, you follow the configuration provided by your textbook. Because if you don't do that, the number, the numer numerical output is going to be different. I think this one is the uh, Johnson's book. So this is the configuration of uh, my uh, 
mechanical component. The bent rod is bolted at A by a journal bearing, at B by a ball and socket joint, and at B by means of cable BC, uh, determining the tension in cable BC. So I would like to know the tension over here, but uh, there are several configurations I need to know, which is uh, the, the uh, bearing over here and the ball connections over here. So before we start, we are given there is a mass equals to 100 kilogram. Other than that, we don't really know any uh, numerical properties of the configuration, but we do know we want to find the tension at BC. So that is something we need to work out. Okay, so before we start, the first thing we need to do is rebound diver. <laughs> You know this is the cable, so this is the BC. I know there is a 100 kilogram load over here, so this is going to be 981 meters. So the other thing I need to figure out are the two forces located at D and A. So this is a ball joint over here, so what kind of forces are we talking about here? Three forces without any uh, moment, right? So I have the X. I think the, the coordinate is given by the problem statement. Let's see. Like this. That's given by the problem statement. So I have the X over here. I have uh, Y over here. For the ball joint, uh, for the bearing, I can rotate freely along this axis, and I can stick this thing back and forth at the bearing. So I only have A X, uh, A D, and A Y over here. Typical. I would like to draw a uh, moment in this configuration, but I think this problem is for your textbook. So for some reason, they don't have a um, moment at Z and Y directions. So I'm going to just follow your textbook because I don't want to create any in, uh, consistent calculation. Okay. Now, what am I going to do the approach? This problem, how many unknowns we have? One, two, three, four, and five. Six. We have six unknowns, but only one known number. So it can be very, very tedious. But we can simplify everything uh, based on what we have here. So let's do something like this. So I want to use moment equation. Which point give me most number of unknowns? So I'm going to use this one as my molar center.
So they are on the same plane, so x, y plane, so we don't have k uh, configuration over here. So if we do um, if R A uh, B, it's going to be directly one check here R Thank you. 